Ron Olson here again at SEMA. I'd like to introduce uh, the new improvements we have done to our riveting system, the PR5. And what we've done is that we have come up with a uh, quick connect system for and develop a new uh, extension arms. So all we do is we remove the arm by removing this locking nut. And this way we can change between different sizes of arms. We have 55 millimeter, 120 and up to 240 millimeter arms now. We also have a handle for ease of use. That is new. To put the arm on is very quick and easy. Have this here. Let me lock the arm in like that. What we now have is, now we can perform SPR, which is self-piercing rivet for three millimeter uh, and five millimeter in sizes. We can also do solid rivets. We can do flow form rivets, calibration punch uh, for the flow form rivets. And of course, removal of the uh, SPR rivets, three millimeter and five millimeter as well. We load the rivets up. Here we have a two millimeter and a 0.9 millimeter aluminum panels. And for the self-piercing riveting, we are obviously not making a hole. The rivet will punch itself through. And make the self-piercing rivet, giving a watertight seal on the back, not protruding at all through the second layer. That's the SPR rivet system. One advantage we believe in what we call the electro-hydraulic system, that we can move the piston forward. And when we let go of the trigger, it stops and holds. So sometimes you need to make sure you're lined up with the rivet or in, in, in the case of removal of rivets too, it comes in very handy. So I, I don't have to punch through some uh, units. Uh, you can go forward, but when it releases the trigger, it goes all the way back. Here we have a retracting system. Here we can push to retract the piston back. So that's, that's one big advantage. It runs on uh, lithium ion batteries. So you could charge up very quickly and you could use over 200 wells per charge. And the battery level does not affect the performance at all. If you have 100%, 50%, 20% battery level, it doesn't matter because the relief system does not complete the rivet unless it has enough battery power. So as you can see here, uh, showing you the principle is that we are going to move, as I press and hold the trigger, it moves forward. And when the pressure is built up, it automatically releases when it has the required pressure that it's asking for. If the battery level is not there, obviously it's not going to complete the uh, cycle. So we just installed the SPR, okay? So that was the procedure of installing the self-piercing rivet. Now in a collision repair, uh, you will have to remove the outer panel that was SPR riveted from the factory. So in this case, I'm going to show you how we remove the uh, self-piercing rivet with a removing tool. So what I do, put the, uh, the removing dies, like so. so this is a wrenching here, we, we make sure all this is tight. As you can see, I have the protrusion here on the SPR. I put that on the male uh, portion of the rivet. And again, in this case, it's actually very good. I can move it forward and hold it. So I'm exactly lined up with a, with a hole in the receiving die. When it's completed, I just let the cycle go through. And as you can see, we remove now the rivet that we just installed, like so. But you can see on the back side, we have a bit of work to do here, because that's where the rivet came through. So it's an uneven surface here that we have to deal with. What to do there is that we can take a flattening dies that comes with the machine, of course. We just remove these. Put the flattening dies on to install the flattening dies to take care of the uneven surfaces here after we punched out uh, the SPR rivets. As you can see, uh, the surface here needs to be flattened. So all we need to do is install these. And as I apply pressure, we flatten out the surface perfectly flat with this high pressure gun and with the flattening tips. You know, now you have a nice and even surface here, ready for, for the calibration punch. If you want to install flow form rivets or solid rivets, 
And the way the flow uh, calibration punch works is that we remove these. And these two uh, dies screws in like this. Then I have the, uh, the receiving die, the female die on the other side. And then we have the calibration ring being a little bit oversized than the punch, pre preventing the punch to go against the uh, aluminum so the retraction a lot easier than it does having the punch permanently installed on the shaft. So what you're gonna see now is that we can punch this through. And through here, now you have the uh, punch in the hole here, so this, this just came out like this, and it gives you a perfectly nicely shaped round hole, and the calibration ring is now ready to use over and again. If we installed flow form rivets, now we can drop the flow form rivet in here and, and install these as well. So, uh, okay, so for the flow form rivets, we can now install Flow form rivets and solid rivets with the, with the ProSpot PR5 as well. So here, here's the different uh, dies that are needed for that. And now with a perfectly calibrated punched hole, we now can drop in different size of um, solid rivets. Put in the flow form rivet, simply through the hole like this. And then we come up with a riveter two. And like that, now we have installed the flow form rivet and it forms a nice back end of the rivet here on the, the holster. So that's the flow form, SPR. And then of course, what do we do now for blind rivets? There are applications on the vehicle where, of course, when we have a pinch well that is exposed and you can reach from both sides, there's, there's not too much problems uh, using obviously the arms and so forth, but sometimes there are situations, such in this case, where you can only reach from one side. We call that a blind rivet application. And then um, ProSpot just came out with a tool that can be used with a PR5 that converts the forward motion of the piston into a reverse mode by simply removing this arm and here is the the new invention from ProSpot the blind rivet adapter it's designed to not require an oil source from the outside everything is enclosed so what we do here is we simply put it onto the self-piercing gun and now we can pivot in all kinds of different angles the way it works is that we are now pushing onto the cylinder inside where the oil comes up to the upper adapter that has a different cylinder and piston here and the force is now pushing that the oil is pushing that cylinder in a rearward motion, making it able for us to pull instead of pushing. We can also perform rivet nuts, as well as all kinds of different sizes of the blind rivets. The blind rivet simply uh, comes in the front. Here we have the calibrated hole that is needed. And I simply put this in like so. and it automatically snaps off, and the stem of the blind rivet is contained safely in this compartment here. So as you can see, now we installed the blind rivet. And in just about um, 30 seconds, we could um, remove and convert this tool from a blind rivet application to a solid rivet application, simply by doing this. Very quick and easy. 
So there you have it. We feel that uh, we have a good solution for upcoming rivet needs, which is a growing application in the collision repair or collision repair. And uh, so anyway, I'm Ron Olsen again here at SEMA and appreciate your time. And for more information, please visit ProSpot.com. Thank you very much.